Shack DSP40, catalog number 21-543. Digital signal processor, noise reduction system with built-in speaker. Back in the early days of DSP, um, this was kind of a cool thing. I believed it was anyway. So um, I bought this in about 94, 95. And um, I was really excited to get this. When I heard this was coming out, um, I got in line at Radio Shack and my local Radio Shack uh, uh, manager, I kind of knew a little bit, you know, and I just, you know, I gave him my number. I says, dude, when these things come in, call me. I want one. And I'm, at the time, I had a Kenwood TS850 SAT, and uh, it was a really good, super good radio, but I wanted to add DSP for it on the cheap. Um, I believe there were a couple other brands out there at the time, but they were like hundreds of dollars, and this was like $39.99. So let's unbox this puppy. I have not seen this for a while, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. In the box, we have a 8-inch um, mono earphone cord or external speaker cord. We have uh, mounting hardware that's still sealed. Mounting bracket. I've never taken it off, actually, or out of the, the styrofoam. Right in there. And then here's the unit itself. Instructions. The other mono cord. So you have a mono cord for input from the radio. So you'd plug one end of this into the radio the other end into the input of the DSP, and then you could um, go out to another external speaker if you like. And I actually remember I used this old, um, oh gosh, can I, I got it pinned up here in my shack. I used it on this old SBE speaker that I got from my dad back in the day, back in the 70s. Okay, anyway. Yeah, true Wagon Master fashion, it's kind of dusty. All right, so kind of a neat little unit. On the front, we have power on-off. We have the volume. Actually, this is the on-off, so this is off, and then one is on, and then volume up here. This activates the DSP circuitry. We have uh, noise reduction, SSB, and CW filtering, and then wide medium and narrow bandwidth, and then the headphone jack. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm actually going to hook this up to my old uh, Drake R8B receiver and play around with it. Um, you know, this was really an interesting little gadget. To me, this was one of those little novelty items where, yeah, it worked. It, you know, it, it worked uh, fair to marginal. And it was just kind of a novelty, and after a while I just got tired of it and just took it out of line. But um, I'm going to revisit this, hook it up to a couple of radios, and enjoy it. All right, let's see. On the back we have standard DC 12-volt plug on the back, external speaker, and audio input. So you would plug um, your radio into this via your external speaker. Pretty fun stuff. All right, well, anyway... Um, you could probably get one of these at a yard sale or something. I have seen these around for, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Um, I just looked on eBay for giggles and there was a guy selling one on there for 55 bucks. Would I pay that? No, probably not. Um, but nevertheless, pretty cool. Communications audio here for sure. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. Okay. It has a five watt built in audio amplifier. So advanced digital audio signal processing reduces no noise and removes whistles, tones, and whines. And you know what? That it does. Built-in communications type speaker and 5-watt audio amplifier. The built-in speaker does sound pretty good in here. Selectable bandwidths to reduce adjacent channel interference on shortwave CB and ham operation. Connects to receiver's headphone or speaker jack. Operates on 12 volts DC using the include fused DC cord or optional AC adapter. And um, I never bought the optional AC adapter because they wanted way too much. And I just ran mine on a power supply um, along with my with my radio. So anyway, cool. If you guys find one of these, um, you know, I wouldn't pay too much for it, but uh, what the heck, they're fun to experiment and play around with. 
You never know. You might like it. All right. That was fun. Hey, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments down below. All right. And for those of you that stuck with this video and watched it till the end, I'm going to give you some bonus footage here. So what I did is when I bought this, I put these little felt feet on the bottom to protect the top of my Kenwood. And I used to do this to all my stuff. Well, hidden down here are the actual screws to access this. So it's, I tore it apart for you guys and wanted to show you what she looks like inside. So that's half the fun of all this, right? Okay, I've never had this open. This is the first time it's ever been opened. And, uh, yeah. Mmm. It smells like Radio Shack in there. So I'd imagine all of our DSP circuitry is in this sealed enclosure. There is our audio chip. Looks like input circuitry. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, let's see here. What audio I see is that. I got to put my really powerful bubbles glasses on here for this. This has a KIA7227 in it. Yeah, KIA7227. What is that, a 5 or 10 watt audio chip? I can't remember. Anyway. All right, you guys, cool. Um, pretty beefy speaker, actually. And, you know, I, if I remember correctly, this did not sound all that bad. It's a pretty nice little speaker. Okay. Now we're done. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.